The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, traders, and uh, welcome to the uh, Bookmap Pro Trader webinar series. Uh, today we have Jay Trader. We've had him uh, several times in the past uh, and always delivers uh, an, an excellent presentation here. Uh, Jay Trader's been trading a long time, uh, since he was uh, 18 years old in high school uh, and um, uh, trading uh, long hours uh, and uh, went from uh, equities and uh, options here um, to um, uh, trading uh, high volume. Uh, and uh, as you can see here uh, in, the, in the text, uh, going over 40, 40 million, uh, 400 million uh, per, per year, uh, and then mostly uh, level two in time and sales here. So um, uh, he is... Um, uh, very, very happy to find Bookmap. Uh, wishes that he had it back then, trading those uh, level two uh, back in those days. Uh, and then uh, now, uh, J Trader uh, uh, focuses primarily on uh, futures, equities, uh, and options, and uh, is the uh, the main trader in the small cap room. Okay, so uh, let me go through the risk disclaimer, and I want to show you the um, uh, contact information for J Trader as well, uh, and then uh, and then we'll just turn it over to him and get started here. So the risk disclaimer, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, and then here's Jay Trader's uh, contact information. We've got his website, his Twitter, his YouTube page, uh, his email here, and uh, special offers uh, you can get from Jay Trader here uh, for longer term uh, uh, offers that we not available from the bookmap.com website. Okay, I will put all of these uh, links into the chat for you uh, so that uh, you can have them and reach out to him directly instead of having to copy it down right now. So without further ado, let me uh, switch it over here to Joseph and uh, we will get started. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning. So let's start with screen. All right, so do you see my screen with book map, uh, Bruce? Yes. Okay, how's the resolution? Pretty good? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's still uh, pretty small. Um, because I'm running a 4K, so let's see if I can fix this. Just one second. Let's see if I can fix the resolution. Drawing tools menu over here. In this join tools options view okay I will I will look if I can zoom over here so I can explain better let's see if I, we have a zoom cursor highlighter <clears throat> Like this. Okay, so let's start. Okay. And then we'll tell me, Bruce, if we you see it good. Okay. So, uh, welcome everybody to small cap trading with Bookmap. Today I'm gonna uh, present what I do every day in the room. So we basically look for uh, where institutional trading are. Uh, investing so uh, which side of the the market they're trading if they're like on the supply or on their demand book map is just a chart visualization of the orders of uh, the algos of um, everything that is executed on the market and you can see it uh, graphically so we'll see some uh, setups uh, I will go over the basics and then we'll like uh, start with more advanced techniques. Um, first of all, um, if you have question, just like uh, write to Bruce, then we will cover some questions. And again, uh, happy to be here. This I think is the fourth or fifth webinar with you traders. So let's start. All right, first, over here, let's see. All right, this is a normal chart with book map. And you can see, for example, uh, BA, uh, 
I trade small caps and big caps. And uh, I have uh, plotted these dots in this way so you can see my settings up here. Um, the settings are uh, for the dots and for the background. I like to see the back background pretty dark. And then you will see these levels. So these levels are called heat map. Uh, the orange level is a big heat map. So this level over here tells you that we have uh, orders set uh, at 210, for example. Uh, the darker the level, the more important the level. Over here, we have a 205, a uh, very important level, so a very big heat map. The dots are the executions, so all the orders that are executed on the market. And you can see that uh, we have uh, bigger dots, so these big dots over here, and then we have the small dots over here. So bigger dots correspond at bigger orders, small dots correspond to our small orders. And then over here on the right, uh, we have um, the um, price. So you can see the levels, 210, 205, 201. And then you can see the first are the orders that are placed over there that are ready to be executed. And this is the cumulative volume. So the amount of the orders uh, and for example, you can see big orders on the bid over here for 322,000. Um, question, Bruce, is it like clear with the, the zoom and everything? Uh, yeah, it looks great. Uh, just for a little while there, the pointer um, we couldn't see, but now now we're seeing it with the uh, red dot there. So uh, uh, the the resolution looks good. Um, the um, I can't quite see the bottom of your chart though. I see an upper okay. uh, level. Uh, there's kind of a blank space up above, though, above the book map. Chart. Okay, so trying to solve that. So first of all, over here, this is the soak. So what is a soak? When the market opens and you see over here 9.30, right? 9.30 um, in Italy is 3.30, so I trade in the afternoon. Um, when you have a huge amount of orders, so when you have... In this case, we have 750,000 shares traded at 205 level. So this level tells you that they try to push, they try to buy uh, BA, so Boeing, in order to push it up because this is like an uptrending stock, you know, that's like reclaiming all the previous supports, right? And resistances, now it's going up. Uh, so at the open, we have right away uh, buyers. So who are these buyers? Buyers are um, big traders, retailers are like firms. So for example, you are like an independent trader, um, maybe you work, you call up your broker and nine o'clock and you say, okay, fill me at the open an order of 5,000 shares on BA, all right? So let's say like a, a mill. And when the, when the open comes, he, ex the, the, the broker, executed the order. So in this case, we start buying over here at 205. Uh, the second thing you have to do is look the direction after this soak. So once we have the fill and we start seeing these dots below the big dot, you know that this, in 90% of the cases, all right, when this pattern happens, will be a fade. And I'm not talking about the fade all day long. I'm talking the fade in the first five, 10 minutes. And you can see over here, we went from 205 so to 198. The next thing you have to look for is the support. So this was a support pre-market. So once the support pre-market comes, you have a reversal. And you can see that the liquidity over here starts like um, going up fast. This is also why I use on book map times and sales, all right? And I filter my times and sales for different uh, dollar stock price, uh, dollar stock prices, sorry. And we start forming this pattern. This is um, an ascending triangle. You can see that each time we push against to 205 over here, we start rejecting. So we have sellers at 205. At the same time, we have buyers over here at 200. You can see on the right, 80, uh, 88,000. What happens next? We started having a breakout. 
and this is what times your entry. So what I'm um, showing you today is not only how Bookmap works, but I like to give traders something that when they go back to their trading station, they can actually use it, they can implement with their uh, setup, with their strategy, and they can find it useful, both, both for small caps, big caps, and find these patterns that open, and this happens generally in the first 15, 20, 30 minutes, in this case, a little bit longer, one hour and 15, but it starts seeing this pattern of reversal. So we open over here, we're red on the day, we're red on the day, and then we start switching to green. So you have an under over, a big accumulation, breakout, 205, they clear the liquidity over here, and then they push and they, uh, actually this went up till 220 and, uh, and more on the day. This is how it looks like on a, um, on a one minute chart. So you can see the soak, you can see it goes down over here and then up again, and then down again, and then up. So you can see traders how the pattern that we can see on bookmap reflects with this. Uh, you see my spotlight, right, uh, Bruce? Yes. Okay, perfect. So this is the breakup we were talking about at 205. So the soak, the support for the reversal, and the breakout over here. So this is the pattern that you have to look for uh, generally uh, gap up, uh, trending stocks, high volume stock, uh, high relative strength stocks, and um, generally above um, a very important resistance or above that daily important resistance. Another example over here, this time always on BA, but at another time of the day, so we can see how we have an intraday pattern uh, at 9.38, 9.36, you see that accumulation. Actually, sorry, this is the same uh, exact pattern that we were looking for, but on another day, all right? So you can see that this accumulation under over comes in another day and they repeat themselves. So let's look over here. We have um, triangle after this big accumulation. And then we start having the break up. Same exact setup of before, two times on BA in the last weeks. Uh, what to look over here? Look at this big support that we have. Two times we broke it and then reclaimed it. Broke it and then reclaim it. So we have a huge amount of buyers over here in the support, and then we start having a push, consolidation, and a breakout. Now let's look another example over here. This is just like zooming what happens to open. Why this soak at 9.30, so what you see over here is 9.30, is important. So this is, again, a soak. And how to trade it, again, look for that direction. Right away after the soak, you start seeing these dots to the downside, all right? And then after that, you see this big order at 223. You can see almost 7,000 shares. Um, how much we soaked over here? 713,000 shares at open. So this was a huge order. We cannot. We couldn't break the 223 and we started like unwinding, unwinding, unwinding. And then you start seeing lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, support over here. So another big order and then a flush. And this is RBA. So you can see the soak over here open, the wash to that pre-market low, started bouncing, another fake breakdown, started bouncing. You can see the increase of the volume. Again, this area over here, this bar, 
for under over pattern becomes your long setup and you can see that we went from 223 up to 234 then curl again passing to the small caps how can we see these setups on small caps so today i was trading with the room on um on chris on idea on avct um we were looking at DJLY. So a lot of volume these days on uh, small caps. Um, basically, it seems everybody is trading small caps. We see often small caps with 50, 100, 150 million of volume, something like incredible, especially because we are in summer. Um, CIDM was a day two over here. So we're talking about a gap down the first day we had a huge extension of the day. So imagine the first day we were going up, 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 and then afternoon we started going down. And then day after, so this is the pre-market 9.15, we started being uh, below the previous day close, all right? So you can see over here, small liquidity, small liquidity. These orders are 100, 200 shares, maximum 1,000 shares. And they grind small, 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 small. So this is the same setup I traded today on IDEA that I showed in the mem uh, members in the room. And we started shorting pre-market, all right? Uh, at open, look what happens over here. At open, first of all, you have this soak. It doesn't matter if this soak is green or red, as long as you have the soak and then you see a direction. Right away, and you can see over here the soak, right away, what do you see above? big heat map so right away they put liquidity they put over there a resistance 22,000 so you know that somebody wants to dump this has a lot of shares to dump so you can start shorting 295 296 risking that three dollar area and this is a pretty good unwind and went 250 in about 50 minutes over here this is the heat map. And this is the big order over there fixed at $3. You can see that on the right, I have also my times in sales. Often I like to filter it. So you can filter with this arrow down arrow for 1,000, 2,000 shares. So don't think that professional traders look at every single order. Uh, you want to see two things, the blocks, and the algos and also yeah the, the order flow so i like to filter for small caps generally 2000 if something's not that liquid at least 1000 minimum 1000 uh, size different for the big caps and you can see there's this uh stair step down pattern lower highs lower lows simply dilution over here all right so we have traders, we have firms, we have um, big hands, what I like to call big hands, unloading, even bag holders probably, unloading their position. This is our CIDM. So you can see the first day went up all the way up and then came down. And then this is day two. When we start having the the flush, same setup as Isaiah today. So you can see over here the the soak and then down one. FRSX. This was last Friday, so this was a good one. Um, high forecast uh, fader. Uh, I like morning pops. So what you see over here, uh, it's ten fifteen pop. Um, and I can make some um, comparison. So this morning, if you were trading Chris, you saw and you remember that at 9.50, we started to reclaim BWAP and start pushing, all right? I know because I was trading it. It was 2.20. I was short 2.35, right at the open on the stuff. And we went around 195. Then we started reclaiming 2.20. 9.50, start pushing. And then we had a clear out high, high of the day breakout up till uh, 270 plus this is the same thing happened on frsx but without that clear so how to see that even if you have a high volume 
even if you have manipulation, it won't have a high of day breakout. Many things to, to compare. First of all, FRSX float against um, volume trading. Um, crisp float against crisp volume. The volume was 5 million on that bar of reclaim today on Chris, on a five minute chart, and on uh, FRSX was 4 million. So the volume is there, but the uh, different is versus the float and also the orders that we had soaking. So you see over here that we have, first of all, a pretty big resistance right at two we have 150,000 and between this 160 and that two dollars we have a huge amount of orders so you can see that we're starting going up and we have these big dots so soaked over here soaked big over here and this was a huge amount of soaking and this soaking was just below that most important resistance at two dollar level you know that when you trade uh, small caps, 150, 250, every 50 cents is a very important level. So look at those level trader. Once we have a break of this trend line, then it starts your short. And you have one resistance above, which is the big heat map. So you have sellers over here set to get filled, uh, being that we have uh, bad holders that they want to sell, or we have like short sellers. This is an important resistance. And then we have more over here, 67,190. So we have two resistances over here. Once we have the crack and we start having these pops, but you see the dots are much smaller than this, means that the liquidity, so the pressure and the volume of the longs over here of the buyers is not anymore like a couple of minutes before. And then we have the fade. So these are the things that you have to consider and you have to be able to spot this in real time. You can see over here the drop, the lower highs, and then the then one. FRSX again, after that trend line break, what happened? We started having a set of lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, and you can see that is pushing against this support, this 150 support, again, cap dollar number. So now you can see that we don't have any more only that two and 190 uh, resistance, but we started having more at 186, 180, 170. So we have sellers that are jumping in and they want to get filled. Everybody that was long over here now is a bag holder so they want to jump out from this trade and they will look to stop if we have a break on 150 because everybody is looking what to exit on a break of support but if everybody is looking to wait for that break on support you think that you will get really filled over here no so you have to recognize this in advance caught it before the breakdown so save literally your ass you can see over here again support the breakdown you can see the big orders over here right so somebody stopped big on this breakdown and then it was a huge loss so this is the chart instead on the uh, frsx three minutes so you can see that we had the morning open then we had the curl push and over here we have a trend line break so total different situation comparing today to uh chris <clears throat> and you can see the break support over here we can see again uh, a zoom of trend line break, how book map um, works. Again, you can see a 250 
I'll do in the morning. This is like five minutes after the open. So you can see a big resistance. We have first a big algo over here, less algo, big algo, less algo. Uh, algo because this was representing itself in pre-market. So it was like always using the same size um, with in this case 40K, then 20K, 40K, 20K and so on. So all morning we had the same algo like uh, refilling represents himself at different levels. Uh, at opening, we can see that we have a soak, the usual soak. We start going down. So right away over here, you have a technique of shorting. Uh, we started finding support into the 215. You can see some big support around 30,000. You can see it here on the right. So buyer step in. We reclaim the opening level. So turns over here green on the day. We have push. Then more push, more push, but then we start having the same exact uh, pattern that we saw before, trend line break, lower highs, and you can see the dots are small over here. We don't have used dots, so it means no liquidity, no buying pressure traders. And this is what you have to look for trading your short over here. So again, you can see all the above, trend line break, and so frequently fail. This is on the, on the stock. So you can see SPCB resistance over here. The all we had at 250 uh, came up again, pushed to that previous consolidation 250. So with book map, you can see what are the best support resistance to work with, and then you have that on. So what can we look now? Just want to show you before we pass again the. The word to Bruce, uh, I think he, he won't mind over here. What What's that? I just wanted to show Bruce today, Chris, over uh -huh. here, because we had basically the same pattern till a certain point, right, that we had on, uh, on RSX. So this is Chris. I'm going to... Zoom out so you can see traders. All right, so this is Chris over here, 8.15. You can see that we start having a dip, push, dip, lower high, lower high, lower high. This is the open, your 9.30, all right? So 9.30, you have the soak. Over here, you have a soak right away, a push above. We had a curl down. On this support of 25,000 uh, bid, and then this star curling over here. Uh, we shorted this morning this area. Uh, trade shared in the room, shorted 237. We were looking to short from 237 till 250. And why shorting over there? Two things very, very simple. So, one is the uh, one reason is because this is a gap in crap at least till 10 o'clock that I trained the room. Uh, then we had a trend line break, the same trend line break I, I showed before. And you can see so many small orders, right? Then we have over here also a big heat map, 80,000 80, over here. So uh, we were looking for that unwind. And we started to see a big wine you can see we don't have big orders we have only small orders the big orders over here are who's stopping out so you see this red that is like 80 percent red this this dot over here so those are sell orders that's somebody who is stopping out and more over here so at that point we were 190 um was up huge for the day and then we started to see this reclaim. So you can start seeing that we start having higher lows, higher lows, consolidation. Over here, we started having a first push to the first big heat map. So remember before, we had on FRSX a push around 1015, 1018 that day with 5 million volume on the 5 minute bar. 
over here we have the first soak so soaked again over here this was a big heat map soak so you can short over here or add to your position and risk once you are in the money this level over here so that's perfect add more algo over here so you can see that we start having more sellers and you can add more your position but remember that this level has to be your stop once we have that we start seeing this curl pattern and this curve pattern is nothing else that the big oh, sorry that the big cup you can see over here so this is like a big cup and then break to the upside so in that case you have to stop your position or reverse it too long from that moment we started seeing again a huge amount of dots bigger dots comparing to the previous dump you can see the the dump over here has very small dots and the dots over here representing more liquidity so a huge amount of volume pushing to the upside again remember use your trend lines use your trend line so you can see over here you started putting your trend line and you start seeing the first break exactly over here or counter trend move a small scalp in case you are a short seller and you simply refuse too long like i see many traders right now over there so this is what i wanted to show you the difference that we have between frsx that was just a push like this where you can short on the trend line break to uh chris which was instead a push the same way but we then had that follow through over here and held the two dollar level so again whole dollar number start curling with high volume and then push to the upside all right traders so this is the difference between the two setup recognize when you will have used volume for a long or a fade for short all right bruce any questions out there yeah yeah and uh everyone get your questions in uh for uh for j trader uh and um uh, we'll go through them here um off the bat here uh let's see um uh, how, how are you um uh, your your trade management maybe you can go through a little bit of that um and and targets uh for profit okay uh first of all risk management i think we will need to talk at least a couple of hours only to go like you know scratch the surface of 30 percent but the main points are that you have to be accountable in trading and according to the setup that you're trading according to your risk according to your balance all right so your capital you have you need a different uh, risk management for example i'm never looking to trade something less than for at least to our profit when i'm day trading day trading can be two minutes trade or four hours trade but never less than um, two R return. So I'm risking one at least to get two. Generally, my uh, targets are between three and four R. Each setup has a different, uh, let's say, win rate. So I have a setup with 50%, setup with 60%, setups with 70% win rate. So when I have the perfect setup, I call it A plus setup. In that case, I like to use full size, maybe sometimes even a little bit more, trading more than one account. And I'm looking for specific targets. So it's not that I enter in a trade, I don't know where to exit. Each setup I trade has a specific entry, exit, and I base my trading on stats and data. Uh, it's not trading 2020, it's not like buying support, resistance, whatever, no. It's a lot of data, a lot of big testing, knowing what works knowing which scenario works knowing which patterns work only having a clear vision of what's working with this market you can be profitable okay um yeah i mean uh, i i love these examples uh that you're showing uh joseph i mean uh, just um uh and very very simple very very clear uh and and especially when you 
then you take away the uh, uh, the book map chart and you look at the candlestick chart, and you you really see what you're missing. I mean, you, you cannot see where they're in the in the order book. You cannot see that high liquidity. Uh, there's no context to did it trade or did it reverse, or why it might reverse uh, at some of those levels. Um, just uh, uh, really really nice stuff here. Um, the um, uh, question about uh, let's see. Um, Oh yeah, uh, Anthony was asking about how you source these trades in the morning. I guess uh, how you do your research and and what you uh, uh, look at for your um, uh, filtering uh, and finding these uh, oh. examples. Okay, I wanna I wanna just show this morning. I have a plan over here with the stats. For example, all right. For example, I look at uh, DPW. I start looking. Uh, sorry, if this is a little bit small. But I start looking at my stats uh, on the biggest gap if in the past they had more faders or more runners. So if they were a gap and go or a gap and crap, that's the example. When they start fading and more. So only by collecting your data, you have this stuff. Um, I have a very clear process. Uh, in my room, I explained basically, um, I was telling to Bruce, the 29th of May, I had a a boot camp with Benzinga and explain my entire strategy how to find a stock to trade each morning. What I can tell you is that I look for the first four or five gaps out of the, of the gate. For small caps, I start looking for gaps at least 15% with at least 150k volume uh, trading on the day. So right, right, right away at 6.37, I'm there in the market, in the room. Uh, this morning, we traded DPW. And you can ask all the members of the room, which were DPW 221, so it actually was 321 till 420. Missed the move to five, but we were trading very early with a lot of traders that you can see also on, um, on the social, like Matt and others. So being uh, fast, looking at scanners, I provide free scanners in the morning in the room. Uh, we use Bookmap every single day, and uh, we focus on the biggest gap of the day. For the big caps, instead, we look for trending stocks like BA, Zoom, NVIDIA, Apple, all the stocks, Tesla, all the stocks that are trending these days, we are on those, especially when they have a breakout from the previous day range. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Jack is asking about, um, uh, I guess, more about uh, trade management, about taking heat um, uh, when it starts to go against you. Um, and um, uh, how, how you, I guess, deal with uh, some of that. Okay, I have an example today on ABCT. Actually, all on Chris, sorry, on Chris. I showed my trade in the room this morning, so I can show it if I can find it one second. But that's a clear example on, uh, on how I use the stop. So to answer your questions, if you are all right over here okay i trade more than one account this was for example i traded chris over here on one account uh 235 call the trade 240 explain members what they were going to do uh covering over here small and then out in the money over here so once i'm in the money first of all that's called trailing i get out break even then I uh, reshort over here and I had a clearer risk. When I saw that that risk was compromised, boom, out. All right. Uh, I reshorted over here. So you can see this 250. In this case, I had my stop at 258, but with the slippage, I can only get filled at 270. So from this, what do you events? One, when you have a trade, always have hard stops. But in a fast, high volatile market, you need also a um, or a nice offset. So, for example, you want to have a, a stop at 258, have a, a offset, up key, uh, up, up key, probably that you get filled plus uh, 0 0.03, at least three or four cents of slippage. I had this morning over here, this was slippage, more than 10 cents slippage. All right. And the second thing is, to always know the risk uh, versus your account. 
So I want never to risk more than 1% of my account on a day. And I know that this is very hard for who has a very small account that needs to grow that account. So you have to be very precise in where to stop. Generally, my stops are never more than 15, 20 cents when I'm trading small caps, when I'm trading big caps, 70, 80 cents, maybe Tesla, $1, $1.20. Okay, um, let's take a look here. What else? So, uh, yeah, Humphrey is asking here, um, what exactly uh, gives you an edge with Bookmap? Uh, what, what's your sole reason for, for using Bookmap? Okay, look at the tape on four different stocks. For example, this morning I had BA, Tesla, Idea, Chris, those were the main four ones. Tape, I mean, look your level two, whatever broker you have, look at all the orders passing, look at all those numbers, then do this for 20 years and you become like me, blind with a big headache, but basically that is. When you have instead, and trust me because the members that I'm uh, training are seeing the difference in this, and I'm not saying this because I need to sell you anything. I'm saying this like an independent trader and trading for a living over here since uh, 1999. Um, you have it more simple. So you can see what happens on your level two just by looking at the chart, all right? So you only need basically to use these charts, put your support resistances and trade what you see, that's it. You do need to see first your chart and then start looking at the tape. If at the tape you have, for example, big orders, uh, small orders, soaking, absorbing, uh, refilling, uh, propping, uh, and more and more and more. So it's just an easy way to look at your charts and to see where you have more um, supply, more demand, because it's all about that. I hope I. I answer your question. Yeah, uh, I think so. Um, the um, uh, let's see. Uh, I think uh, Sean is asking here um, about soaking uh, and what exactly um, uh, you mean by that. If you can uh, define that. Sure. So before we are looking at the example on um, even here, let's say Chris. So. When you are at the support or resistance and um, over here we have a support at two dollars right so this heat map over here you can see 49 9000 so 50k over here the support once we have this dot over here and they traded 136,000, so much more than that support means that we had a huge amount of soaking and if we have that support more than the sell over here, that soaking will start like reversing to the upside. So soaking is when you execute a big order that support, that support holds because it's like accumulates all the shares that they sell to him, he accumulates for them pushing back up. The same thing for a soak to the resistance. So they um, eat, 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 for example, 250 resistance, Let's say over here, there's a big soak, maybe hidden seller. His share is like only showing 5K shares, 200 shares. We don't know. Uh, you only see that on your level two. And you say, why? I see 200 shares on the ask, but I see on the times in sales, they already passed over here half a million shares. So that 200 shares, buddy, is not a real seller here. It's a hidden seller. And what he's doing is soaking. So he's waiting that the supply over here, the sorry, the demand over here, so the buyers exhaust, so he can what? Boom, murder you short. Or in the other case, is there selling at a specific level because maybe bought like 20% uh, before. Okay. Um, uh J Trader, do, do you mind sh uh, showing your uh, volume dot settings? A uh, question about that. Oh, yeah. So 
let's go see first of all what I have. Generally use best bid as heat map, iceberg displayer, special if you use futures. Very simple over here and volume dots. So now let's go volume dots. Okay. So over here, volume dots. I use 3D bubbles. You can change the size over here. I like to have a little bit less than half. Transparency, so you can see if you want no transparency at all. I just like to see it because I'm half blind. Um, smart. And then over here, I like to filter it. So often you will see me filter 1,000. So those orders, 200 shares, 100 shares, I really don't care them. If we are in pre-market, yes, then I put one. And you can see, you see how many more bubbles we have, but you don't need to see basically a 50 shares, uh, 30 shares, 20 shares, no. When something's very volatile on a small cap, use at least 1,000. If you are like in big caps like Tesla, put 50. All right, that will be fine. But you cannot use something for me like this. You get too much confusion. You want to filter out things, all right? Are not the retailers that will move the market. Okay. Uh, let's see here, a few more questions. Uh, for um, entry um, or execution, are you typically uh, using limit orders or using market orders? Okay, if I have to stop out as an emergency order, I have, uh, for example, this um, machine. My friend Fata bought it for me. And it's like a uh, Razor Tartars, right? There are so many out there. Basically, I have hotkeys, number 20, boom, out market order, one I have for uh, sell, one I have for cover, being I'm uh, long or short. Otherwise, I use always limit orders uh, with offset. For example, I have limit order to short on the ask which I use pretty often. Um, I have limit orders to use bid. I have limit orders uh, to buy ask and to buy bid. Uh, if you use market orders, you won't have precise fills. Surely, if you use limit orders, you have to be pretty quick. Market orders guarantees you a fill, but is like, uh, you try to buy 250, so limit order will be maybe 250 with a slippage, you can have offset plus 0 0.01. So you get filled 251. Maybe you want upset of 0 0.02. So you get filled like 252 as well. But with market order, if the move is fast, yes, you get filled, but you get filled 260. So then you have to think, okay, now my resistance, so, sorry, now my stop loss, I bought 260. Is that anymore this previous resistance, which was 250 itself? Now I have to risk more than two, three cents. Now I'm risking 15 cents. So market orders are never a good thing, in my opinion. If you swing, if you trade uh, Tesla and you want to sell like in two days, in three days, doesn't matter. If you day trade, you have to be a sniper. So a sniper, if you go there and you have, for example, to, to shoot like three targets, it's not that, mm, you know, we'll just shoot like that. No, you have to be super precise. Same as trading, buddy. Same as trading. Okay. Um, are you trading from the bookmap chart? Uh, or you, you're no, using, uh, using a, a, another another software for for your executions? No, no, no. I'm not using uh, bookmap because I'm trading um, equities. And actually, I I have more than one account with different brokers, so it would be impossible for me to use only bookmap for this reason. But uh, many traders use it, and it's fine. Okay, so that answers your question, John. Uh, Patricia is asking, um, uh, can book, book might be used in place of charts or uh, must be used together? I'm not sure I quite understand. Uh, uh, I think I got it, Bruce. I think I got it. So surely you need a daily chart, all right? But how many softwares are there give you free access to daily charts? Then when you're trading, intraday book is more than enough as a old mentality trader over here so i start with technical analysis i start reading all this stuff uh years and years ago i like always to have like a candlestick chart something very simple or even bar charts i started with that 
but you need only one chart. And then you can use even only book map. There's more than enough. Okay, uh, excellent. Uh, let's see here. Uh, any more questions? I think that's it. Uh, we've, we've run through them all here. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, oh, and uh, are, are you trading any futures as well? I used to trade futures, uh, CL, ES, uh, NQ, YM, uh, Mini Russell, but now not anymore. Uh, too much to do right now with the crazy um, volume that we have on the stock market. I simply love to read the news in the mornings. Like I'm passionate about this stuff. You know, see how many like fluff news they press release, and then you have so many pump and dumps. So I prefer right now to trade stocks and options, but stocks. Okay. Um, all right. Any? Let's see. Any more questions here? Uh, why are Lukuri? Oh. Yeah, uh, Humphrey, this is a good question. Um, uh, so this, you're using the big levels like kind of support, support and resistance levels, but why are your, your liquidity levels so clear here? Um, Humphrey's asking. I mean, you, you, you picked some really nice examples. Uh, that, that's for sure. All right. No, actually, I, I, I took the example that we, we traded in the last two weeks in the room. Ah. So uh, I didn't like select. I mean, you can come every day and see what we trade, and and it's it's everything it's everything out out oh. there every morning. Bruce knows that I screen share one stock on um, on Bookmap, and we switch. For example, from now I, I don't have over here big cap, so we switch like DA. Uh, this morning we were looking DPW. I mean DPW. If you were looking this on on Bookmap, it's so so easy to understand. So once in the morning we start having this uh, curls over here in pre-market, we are looking over here around, let me take it for you. Okay, over here, around 320, exactly over here. You see this traders? Oh, sorry. You see this traders over here? 320 over here. This They started to see this curl. This, this was amazing, amazing, amazing. And you can see that the more we are going up, the more support was coming from here, from here, then they put it over here, they put it over here, and then they start like pushing, pushing, pushing. Once this was a, this was an algo over here, like so funny, and then they still use that support. So it was very easy to follow the trend, very very easy to follow the trend traders, and simply unbelievable. And you may think, oh, it's so difficult. How can I trace something like this? Trust me, with the setups, with the good risk management, it's not that hard, actually. All right. So they have some trader that had the biggest day ever. So before I was showing Ed over here. So I'm very proud of, of the work that we're doing. And thanks also for the support that Bookmap gives us uh, every single time. All right. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I wasn't um, uh, uh, hinting that you're uh, cherry picking. I mean, this is the live market uh, here. Uh, it's just a beautiful chart. It's so it's just so it's so clear. Um, uh, you know, beautiful areas like uh, of the soaking or absorption there uh, on. Uh, and then a flip of the book from, uh, you know, was resistance now support, um, you know, just a re really pretty order flow uh, in the, in that example. Exactly. Uh, Exactly, Bruce. So, um, uh, yeah. In fact, um, I I find that uh, uh, a lot of times the the stocks, um, the larger players, they really stick out and 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 uh, you know are, are very very clear compared to some of the futures uh, markets, for example. Uh, it's true. Here. It's true. And when you trade stocks, the thing that I like. <clears throat> sorry, much. Uh, this, the thing that I like the most is the fact that you have uh, news, and um, so many times you can have an edge from from the opening uh, with the news. If you also see the the past of uh, the same stock, how it reacted to certain news. For example, and a stock that puts out always license agreement and feels like nine times on ten on the news, what you will do? You will look it to short, and then you will look for resistances, you will look to short into a book map resistance, for example, like this soaking over here, you look for patterns that recur each time you have the same stock. 
Right, right. Um, let's see here. Uh, we'll just take a, a few more. Um, let's see, Robert was uh, requesting a few times here the IZEA. Uh, if you could uh, uh, display that chart again. Uh, and let's see. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then uh, uh, also the, uh, people are writing in about the clarity in the monitor. Um, uh, just uh, probably just because uh, the 4K as well is certainly helping. It's a it's really pretty um, uh, monitor there uh, that you've got. Um, let's see. I think when this, they will probably view this on recording, which will be much better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody, these will these are recorded, uh, and uh, we put them up later in the afternoon on our YouTube page, uh, so that uh, you can have that. Uh, let's see. Just uh, we'll go through one, maybe one more question. We've almost been going an hour here, uh, and um, uh, take uh, and choose a good one here. Uh, can I only appoint something on idea? Sure. Okay. So idea is a second day, right? It's the same setup that we saw before on some of the examples uh, that we've seen. For example, was uh, I'm going to put it over here CIDM. Remember CIDM traders the the second day play. So you start looking at idea at a resistance over here in pre market 220. If you look at 220 is also the high volume area of yesterday. So you're looking to short pops into that area. That's the reason why we shorted this morning idea. We were looking for some push and then we'll look for unwind. And you can see over here also bookmap putting that resistance. Okay. Um, yeah, and again, I mean, just uh, look at that example i mean just beautiful like uh all of that uh liquidity right below that the pre-market swing uh completely absorbed and and soaked there and then uh reversing right back up into liquidity levels uh at right now currently uh and uh let's exactly. see if, let's see if we can get up a higher one uh, by the swing of the uh cash open there um in fact uh, looks uh look looks like it's uh <laughs> starting to mount its uh attack um Let's see here. One one more question, guys, and uh, then we'll we'll wrap it up here. Uh, now I, I've put um, uh, J Trader's contact information here several times in the chat, uh, guys. So if you're interested in his room and discounts, etc., there's a few questions about that. Uh, please uh, reach reach out to him there. You've you've got his email. You've got his website, uh, and uh, there's also the special link offer uh, for for Bookmap from J Trader if you're interested in that as well. Um, and um, yeah, and I guess uh, Humphrey can you just ask uh, the, what's the discount um, room name? I guess uh, if you, if you can maybe explain a little bit more about the room, uh, J Trader. Yes, so um, we provide when Discord. You're Discord. Discord. We come. Yeah, um, yeah, we provide um, uh, a room where we not only write the trades but we talk and you can see my screen live, screen share, I share the trades. Uh, there are uh, some good professional traders. Um, we have a mentoring program. So uh, some of the best traders that you see on, uh, even on the socials are on uh, my, my mentoring program where every single day we have a meetup, me and the trader, we go over the trades and we uh, build a risk management plan uh, we look what setups to trade. So basically, it's not a room that is so noisy where you have tons of information. No, from 9:30 till 10:30, I'm almost only um, speak and uh, share setup, uh, share trades, explain the trades because it's not like you follow alerts in my room. You learn how to trade, uh, and you receive a free day trading course. You receive all our day trading lessons for free. Uh, then we have a mentoring, as I said, possibility also for uh, advanced trading course, which is for uh, who wants really to step to, to the next level. Okay, excellent. Um, uh, last question here, um, we'll um, wrap it up. Uh, some, some thank yous and uh, uh, excellent job uh, from uh, Robert and others here, um, uh, Lancelot as well. 
the um, uh, how did, how long did it take you to learn Bookmap, and um, wh what was the process you you know how you started to integrate it within your trading? For example, did you use the replay mode a lot uh, and replay files and and uh, uh, to learn help mm -hmm. learn Bookmap? Okay, first of all, um, I started Bookmap uh, many years ago. Then I, I stopped. Uh, and then, thanks to my friend Delta Trader, I uh, went back to, to use Bookmap. Um, and I see that Bookmap also improved during the years with more features. So, how to start? One, um, study and watch all the videos, uh, webinars on Bookmap YouTube. Uh, then, join the room, come over here, and I made a ton of Bookmap videos on explaining how to trade them. Uh, how to see institution, how to spot, how to have patterns. So I would suggest you this. And it won't take more than um, one week uh, to learn all the setups that uh, are there to trade. Okay, excellent. Um, I think uh, I think that's it. Uh, we uh, uh, just uh, hit the hour mark and uh, we've uh, gone through just about all the questions here. Um, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Jay Trader. Uh, another uh, excellent uh, 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 webinar from you here. Uh, any uh, parting uh, words uh, you want to uh, uh, end on? Yes. Um, thanks, first of all, Bookmap. Bruce, I love to work with you, Trader. Also because you know a perfect Italian and we can always discuss <laughs> in Italian. <laughs> and um, I, I wait to, to see all the traders now with Bookmap, see in the room, and uh, let's kill it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, J. Trader. Bye-bye.